Okay, the purpose of this video is to review the contents of a survival kit that would have been stored under the ejector seat in some sort of attack or fighter aircraft in the U.S. arsenal in the late 1980s. Uh, when I was in the process of acquiring this kit, I wasn't really able to find a whole lot of information on it on the internet, whether that was written or video, so I thought I would post a video that, that shows the contents in case anybody was interested in the breakdown. I am not a historian, so um, I, can, I can comment on a lot of the items in this kit, but if there's anybody who knows more about this stuff than I do, um, I'm interested in, in learning more about it myself, um, please comment on this video. If you are going to find it boring watching me unzip this pouch and, and look at all the little items inside, I strongly suggest you go find something else to do now. All right, so let's get into the kit. The outer pouch itself uh, has two yellow adjustable uh, backpack straps on it. These are uh, some sort of nylon webbing. It's fairly thin and it's about an inch and a half wide. Uh, it has a handle on the top and then a pouch on the top. This kit, the whole, the whole pouch here is, um, is mostly cotton material, cotton canvas. Um, and then the, the straps and stuff are, are like a nylon webbing. On either side of the main pack, there's a window. Coming out through that window is a strap, nylon strap. It's doubled over and stitched in the center. And that is attached to a large pouch that's on the inside of this. So that large pouch has a, a, one of these straps on both the left and right side. This clip is pretty cool. It opens like this. I'm guessing this is so you can carry it like a fanny pack. <laughs> the bag has a brass zipper that runs around three sides. Unfortunately, on mine, the uh, zipper pull tab was broken, so I just put a split ring, split ring through there with a piece of parachute cord. So now I'll open this thing up. All right, this is the technical manual that came with the pack. It is not bound like a, like a normal manual would be. They're all loose leaves of, of paper printed on both sides. Um, basic information about, uh, about the pack, like an inventory and um, uses. Poncho, that reminds me. The whole thing smells like puke because the, the poncho that's inside has the vomit sealant around the, the hood. Uh, so anybody who is, who's issued or, or owns one of the older 80s, 90s ponchos is familiar with that putrid smell. The whole thing smells like that. Okay, now getting into the, the pack itself. Uh, right on top, there's an old mosquito head net. Here. Tie drawstring permanently. <laughs> Who thinks of this stuff? It's like, yeah. You don't ever need to take that off. Uh, here's the here's the poncho. There's this good old sealant that I was talking about before. This is a rip stop poncho. All olive drab. And here is the sleeping bag. So the sleeping bag is labeled. Arctic Survival, and it's got an NSN 8465011317921. Uh, 
the sleeping bag has this really cool little diagram on here that shows you how to open it, put your foot on it, and pull the handle. This weighs about seven pounds. On the back, there's care and use instructions. I'm not actually going to open this because I'm, I'm planning on using this whole kit for uh, like a, a simulated camping trip. So I want to be able to get this thing back in the, in the bag and I have a feeling if I, if I open this, it's never going back in there. This pouch here is where the rest of the survival items are stored. So this pouch pulls out like this. All right, so this is the inner pouch with the rest of the survival stuff in there. I don't know why I'm saying survival, obviously, at this point. Okay. Now you're looking at the inside pouch. It has a zipper that goes around three sides. This is the shovel blade for the multi-function saw machete snow shovel deal that this kit comes with. This is a water storage bag. I should mention that I'm not sure how this kit was originally packed. It's It was unpacked by the person that listed this thing on eBay and and I unpacked it once already and, and put it back together. Um, the cool thing is, unlike a lot of survival kits where you pull everything out, you can't get it all back in, I have been able to repack this. Um, so, yeah. All right. We'll start with the rations. In there. They're labeled retest 5 of 93. Vacuum sealed return if ring is lifted. Place thumb here. <laughs> In case you can fly a fighter aircraft, but you can't figure out how to open a can. Food packet survival general purpose. All right, so I already opened one of these. Inside, there was soup and gravy base, chicken flavor. So for all you trolls out there that say you can't, oh, you shouldn't put bouillon cubes in your survival kit. Yeah, okay. Inside the tin was also sugar, coffee, and then these bars. Type one corn flake bar. Two of those. Type four cereal bar granola. Type two rice cornflake bar. So I'm, I'm guessing, I haven't opened them all, but I'm guessing that these all full of different delicious variations of the corn or granola bars. Okay. Pro tip, save the lid. Use the lid to stir or cut as necessary. It is much less likely to cut you if you're tired in a, in a crappy situation than your knife is. Uh, 
Um, speaking of the knife, the kit came with an US knife. Anyone not familiar, it's like a American type Swiss Army knife. It's got a can opener. It has it has a main blade. This particular one is marked Q 1986. Driver and bottle opener. And lastly, it has an all reamer type tool. The kit also came with a wire saw, hand saw, finger grip, one each. It's got some instructions on the outside here. Just like most wire saws, it has uh, rings on either end. These ones are not are not permanently attached. They have thumb screws so that if you snap this thing um, and it becomes shorter, you can uh, reattach it. And it also has a spare wire on the inside. This saw is capable of cutting wood, plastic, and metal um, in any direction. I'm not going to get into any direction. Um, they kind of suck for for wood compared to some of the other survival saws, uh, wire saws, but I guess if you're in jam. This is the biggest uh, signal mirror I've ever seen. This is about three inches by six inches. It has the sighting hole in the center. And on the back it has instructions. It's pretty cool. The kit came with five of these candles sealed with electrical tape in an aluminum cylinder with a lid. Have a compass. Magnetic, comma, UN, one each. Got some instructions. Hoping my audio isn't cutting out here. It seems like any time I crackle paper, my audio cuts out and I want to smash my phone. Instructions for operation of compass. Actually pretty cool because you can read it from the top, but you can also read it from the side of the compass, and it does have uh, sight line and notches. Whistle. Standard plastic whistle with a cotton shoelace type lanyard and a little plastic doohickey on here so you can tension it up. We have a spoon. Match case. Unfortunately, uh, when I purchased this, the seller took out the matches, the pen flares, the trioxane or, or some type of fire starter that was in the kit and the smoke uh, signal device type wire for snares and any other million uses Dome tool mag bar whatever you want to call it it's a space blanket it's pretty thin like super super thin thinner than you would think mylar would be with uh, orange on one side and silver on the other gill net fishing these things are rare as hen's teeth nowadays those are cool so 
this is the saw machete deal. This has a notch that the blade sits in and then it indexes on this pin and the threaded rod and then the wing nut locks it in place and it is like a machete. It's not very sharp on one side. Digging tool, saw. The base of the kit is this square frying pan deal. It's got holes on the outside so you can use the wire to hang it over a fire um, for boiling water, cooking food, hopefully all the fish you catch with the emergency fishing kit. Uh, melting snow. You could use it as a toboggan. The last two things in the kit are an old first aid kit. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen these and know what's in them, but I'll go through it anyway. It has contents list that and they probably should have included a magnifying glass in this kit if you want to read that. CPR. Eye dressing kit. This has got a date of 992 on it. If you have one of these, be really careful with it because they snap here and here. All right, you got finger bandages, gauze compress, two things of chapstick. There's a whole lot of chapping going on out there. solution for disinfecting wounds or purifying water seven drops per quarter liter lids for the little medicine bottles there's two of these medicine bottles in here I'll get the other one out in a second uh, two of these old bandages these are kind of like uh, the precursor to the Israeli bandage uh, you rip open the side here um, the bandage itself has onion paper wrapped around it. You grab it like this and snap it, and then it's a pressure bandage with two long pieces of uh, olive drab cloth that you, you tie over the wound. So it's got two of those. This is a triangle bandage or um, bandage, comma, mucilin compressed, camouflaged. Um, these things are are phenomenal for a million uses. You use it as a headband, use it as a sling. I think it has probably two uh, safety pins in here. Uh, and the last thing in the first aid kit is water purification tablets. Expired in 92. The fishing kit comes in a plastic uh, pocket case. It, it had rotted old duct tape around the outside, so I had to clean that up. Um, fishing instructions, two weights of nylon cord, lighter one and a heavier one. Um, we got some spinners, different size fish hooks with weights, flies, Two different types of leaders, metal and mono. Spoons. Uh, there's a razor blade in here. Um, sail needles on a yellow cloth and safety pins on a red cloth. And then there's a little card down here with how to tie different leader knots and hitches. Okay, that concludes my thrilling presentation on this survival kit. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it.